Well, I think that's everybody. These are my thank you notes. It's important to thank people for nice things they do. My dad taught me that, even though he didn't know it. He always grumbled and complained about everything. Everything was a big production, even going to the grocery store. And the way he drove that cart, just like his car. Watch it! Move out of the way! Hey! God, tried to cut me off. He'd drive people right into the frozen food section. One other thing he did at the grocery store is he bought groceries. Well, they weren't for us, and I couldn't figure out what it was all about. And then on the way home, he would drop these extra groceries off at a neighbor's house. You know, the guy who was out of work? Well, that's what he'd do. And he taught me about being nice and about being giving, and that's a pretty cool thing. My dad was really cool in a lot of ways, although I never told him that. It's hard to tell your dad, hey, dad, you're cool. Hmm. Try it. My work. Winters seemed to last forever in Cedar Knoll, Wisconsin. And the longer they went on, the shorter everyone's tempers became. Ah, oh, when are they going to quit with all this Christmas music? When is spring going to come? I'm telling you, if I hear one more Christmas girl, I'm going to flip. <laughs> By the time spring finally arrived, cabin fever had long since mutated into cabin warfare. And it was time for the annual neighborhood feud. What a cruel world it really is. Anything could set off a neighborhood feud. A newspaper delivered to the wrong house, a broken lawn sprinkler, or even the arrival of new next door neighbors. So the Jensen's moved in next door on a Thursday. And the following Sunday, all our neighbors, armed with tuna delight, cucumber salad, bread pudding, paraded into our backyard. Potluck suppers were my mom's passion in life. Every single neighborhood event warranted one. Mom, can I stop now? Keep peeling, Tommy. You can never have enough sweet potatoes. As a lifetime window monitor, Mom had the inside scoop on all the neighbors. Oh, look, there are the Powells. They're real rich. And you think with all their money, they'd bring something more than a jello mold. <laughs> but that's OK. Mom, the Wilsons are on the phone. They want to know what to bring. They're real poor, impoverished. Destitute. Oh, they don't have to bring anything. You just tell them to come. Oh, look, the Barkers. Their grandmother lives with them. She's 102. Had her birthday last year. I week. shared my own neighborhood she secrets with Scott Jensen. All right. This is the best tree for climbing if you want to spy in the Henderson. Meanwhile, in the backyard, Dad shared a little of his own warm and cuddly hospitality. Wow. Oh. Jensen, you're a pathologist, are you? Huh. What's that, like an Indian guide? <laughs> you look for paths in the woods? Actually, pathology is the study of post-mortem corpses. Huh? Yeah, study stiffs. Uh, in a crude sort of way, you are correct. Could you watch these for a minute? Sure. Hey, you didn't come right from work, did ya? No. I don't want any of that pathologist juice on my uh, burger there. More sweet potatoes, dear? Yeah. For crying out loud, how many did you make? Well, there's three bowls on the table, more in the oven, and the rest are in the garage. Now, you sure you don't want to have some? The neighbor's a wacko. Andy, be nice. Eh, he studies dead bodies. Everybody has a hobby. He's a vegetarian. Ooh, you think he'd like some sweet potatoes? Ah. So, I understand you're a vegetarian who studies dead bodies. So? So? Hey. You catch Bob Hope last night on the tube? Ah, ah. Nah, I don't like him. What? Well, I just don't think he's funny. And just like that, another neighborhood feud was born. I once saw Bob Hope do a special USO show for German prisoners of war. Get him rolling in the aisles. They don't even speak English. They gave him a standing ovation. Who do you like, Hackett, Youngman? Oh, those guys are washed up. Oh. Well, if you really want to know, I prefer Milton Berle. He likes Milton Berle. That guy wears a dress. <laughs> That's why it's funny. Unbelievable. My next door neighbor likes Milton Berle, everyone. Well, at least he's using jokes from this century. Ah, uh, Bob Hope's jokes are not old. They're good jokes, American jokes. Jokes that don't prance around in a dress and high heels, so maybe you should just get your uh... Hey, Dad, can we get some burgers? How do you like your scotch? Burnt or charred? Good idea. Why don't we all have something to eat? 
Hey, Burl boy. I hate to bother you, but your dog's ripping up my lawn. Snickers is just digging for bones, Mr. Anderson. On my yard? Actually, I didn't want to bring this up, but that section of the yard right there belongs to me. What are you talking about? Who mows the lawn? Who rakes the lawn? Who manicures this doll, huh? I do. Who asked you? I saw the property map when I bought the house. It clearly shows that my property extends all the way to that tree. Andy, maybe we should call it a day. I'll handle this, dear. Listen to me, land grabber. You're dealing with a decorated war veteran here. Those mortar blasts must have wrecked your hearing, then. Read my lips. That land is my land. That land is my land. That land is your land. Just because it's a song, Jensen, don't make it true. You're hopeless, Anderson. Hopeless. Completely hopeless. The rain refused to let up. It just got stronger and stronger, and so did the feud. Hey, Louie. No concern with the enemy. But then, look at that. That Jensen jerk is moving his house closer to mine. I'll keep my eye on him. I. Oh, yeah, Dad. I'm sure he gets up in the middle of the night, sneaks outside, digs up that foundation, pushes that house six inches closer. By Christmas, we'll be a duplex. You may be right, Louie. Where are you going, Dad? I'm going to the hardware store. It's time to play a little defense here. <laughs> There was nothing worse than going to school on a rainy day. Of course, Dad didn't seem to mind the rain. He was too busy recreating the Great Wall of China in our backyard. What are you doing? I'm securing the perimeter. Make our land safe for God-fearing Americans and keep that pathologist Jensen out of here. And their little dog, too. They'll be back in Kansas before they know it if they mess with me one more time. That's great, Dad. Real community spirit. I heard that. I was hoping you could give me a ride to school. Maybe you didn't notice, but it's raining out. What? You mean this humidity? This isn't rain. I was in the South Seas for monsoon. I slept through the hurricanes in Hawaii. I vacationed in Atlantis during the wet season. Now, that's rain. <laughs> this is a little precipitation, Don. Worry about this. <laughs> Go on, go to school. I bet this isn't even collected. Uh -huh. Like the plague, the neighborhood feud spread all the way to the elementary school. <laughs> it's true, I'm telling you. What's so funny? Did your dad really put up a 10-foot brick wall around his yard to keep a little dog out? That's what you were all laughing about? Oh, we weren't really laughing. <laughs> it's more of a chuckle. Like this. You know, my dad wouldn't have to build that wall if your dumb dog didn't keep digging up our lawn. My dad says that it's our property. Then your dad's as dumb as your dog. My dog's smarter than your whole family. My family's smarter than your dog. That's telling him, Louie. That's right. Give it to him, Louie. Come on, Anderson. Attention, Give students. your best shot. School has been canceled for the rest of the day due to severe flooding. Please exit in a quick and orderly manner. I'd have to defend the family honor some other day. The rain had caused the river to overflow and the whole town was flooded. A state of emergency was declared, and we couldn't have been happier. No school for a week. It was like Christmas vacation in the middle of spring. Our little town became one big lake. The streets were flooded. The supermarket was flooded. Everything was underwater. Except for one little piece of property. Hey, Dad, guess what? You kids been fooling with the TV again? No. I'm trying to watch the longest day. Rain All I can get in here is some flood jam. What's going on? Where is that? Flood, 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 flood! What's going on? There's a flood, Dad. What are you talking about? There's no flood out there. Now bring on the Duke. Come upstairs. Why should I? I got something to show you. Look! Your wall's holding back the water. Well, what are you... Of course it is. I built it to do that. Well, I thought you built it to keep the Jensen's dog out of the yard. No, I knew exactly what I was doing when I built that wall. Army Corps of Engineers taught me all about redirecting water. The same principle I used when I redirected the Alabama River. What river? 
You probably know it now as a Mississippi. Hey, Dad. That's probably the National Guard right now. I bet they want you to teach the troops how to build anti-flood walls. Uh, hello there, Andy. What? Are you from Lucky Lady Cosmetics? Uh, my wife goes with a natural look. Nice luggage, though. What is that? Uh, Oleg Kasanik? Uh... It's the Wilsons. Our neighbors. Come on in. They got flooded out of their house, and I invited them to come and stay with us. What do I look like, Noah? All right. Let's go. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Watch your step. Two by two there. Oh, oh there, neighbor. The Johnsons. Ah. Oh, come right in. Everybody's welcome. I hope you didn't bring any of that lime green jello over here. I always try to pawn off of that. Ah, thank you. Uh, here it is. For the next hour, a steady stream of dripping wet neighbors showed up at our front door. Every family on the block was flooded out, and Mom invited every last one of them to bunk with us. Well, who didn't get sweet potatoes? We're crying out loud. Let's go. People are waiting. I'm gonna start charging rent for the room. Andy, charity begins at home. Let it begin at someone else's home, and let it end here. Strange. You know who's not here? No one. Everybody's here. The whole neighborhood is here. The Jensen's. I'm wondering if someone shouldn't go check on them. Someone? Andy? Louie! Uh, Tommy! No way, buddy! Come on, Louie. Give me ten fingers. I'm giving you ten fingers. Then give me twelve. Careful now, watch your step. It's slippery. Sneakers! Please. Sneakers! Look! Sneakers! Where are you, boy? Hey, Jensen! What are you doing on the roof? We're getting some sun. Why don't you come over to our house? I don't think so. We're fine here. What? It's boring. No, no, we're going to stick it out. I think it's starting to clear up. We're crying out loud, Jensen. It's not clearing up, it's a flood. Don't you ever read the Bible? One is by land, two is by sea. Come on, Genesis. No, no, don't want to impose. Thanks anyway. Guy's ridiculous. He wouldn't know a natural disaster if he married one. Oh, Andy? I don't think I ever met anyone more stubborn than Jensen. Had enough sunbathing? <laughs> Maybe we'll just come in for a moment. There's nothing worse than a wet neighbor. Decided <laughs> to surrender, huh? <laughs> Louie, why don't you get Scott some dry clothes? Sorry about earlier today, you know, in the cafeteria. What were we fighting about anyway? I don't remember. Me neither. Friends? Friends. So, let's go find your dog. How are we gonna do that? There's a flood out there, Louie. You got a boat? Are you kidding? I got a whole fleet. Send a prayer, send a prayer over there. Ah, that's right, I know every military hymn in the world. I used to sing that as a lullaby for Patton. Here you go, Shirley. You dry yourself off. Here's a towel and a nice warm robe. Hey, what's a big idea? Yeah, I can't even believe this. It's short on supplies once again. Hey, up there. It's the Johnson's cat, Ginger. Grab it. Got it. Look over there. The Wilson's turtle, four o'clock, coming around again. Hurry up, Lou. Gotcha, Shelly. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a Zigfield show. Uh, uh, I'd even rather be Milton Berle right now. Oh. Long enough shower, Anderson? Oh. You save some hot water for the rest of us? Would you like some dessert? Nah. Oh, man. I'll be glad with everything. Back to normal. Uh... What's the matter, dear? Can't sleep? Can't find a place to sleep is more like it. Someone's sleeping in my bed. Someone's in my bathroom. I'm surprised no one's eating my porridge. Oh, I've got just the place for you to sleep, honey. The pantry? What am I, a can of chili con carne? <gasps> Sneakers! Sneakers! Hey, turtle. 
Get down. Down in front, I can't see. There he is. Come here, sneakers. Hey, you have a good swim, boy? And just when we thought the crisis was behind us... Uh-oh. Trouble. Another one began. Where's your dad, Louie? Dad! Wake up! What? What are you doing? How many times have I told you? You don't sneak up on a guy sleeping on an ironing board! Your wall, Dad, it's leaking! You know what to do, don't you, Dad? Oh, yeah, I know just what to do. All right, campers, rise and shine. Pack your stuff, hit the road. This ark's going down. Say goodbye to Noah. In 15 minutes, you're going to be floating in Lake Anderson. And then an amazing thing happened. Instead of moving to higher ground... Let's go. Women and children first. Hey, what are you doing? Everyone decided to stay. Hey, Anderson, have you got a shovel? Take this over to the Wilson. They all went outside into the pounding rain and tried to fix Dad's wall. Hurry! We're losing it! It's not working, Dad. We need something stronger. Something like concrete, like cement, like... Sweet potatoes, anyone? Uh, that's it. Give me those sweet potatoes, baby. <laughs> Are you hungry, dear? Hmm. Maybe I'll use just a little too much starch. It worked! Everybody, the answer is sweet potatoes. You hear me? Sweet potatoes for my sweet potato wife. Louie, go distribute these. Uh, you have any more, dear? I know you do. Well, just a few, I think. Of course, most of them are in the basement. Ah! Oh! It was a long night, but it was all worth it. about messing with your mother's sweet potatoes and my engineering genius. Oh, oh. oh that's great, Dad. Can I go back to sleep now? Oh. No time for that, Louie. Here's what I want you to do. Grab a mop and get some sponges and a ton of paper towels and meet me outside. <laughs> what are we doing, Dad? It's payback time. It was really nice of you to put us up. Oh, it was our pleasure. Maybe we'll have tornadoes this summer and you can come and stay again. <laughs> Thank your husband for us. I will? Well, let's go, dear. I'm sure we've got a big mess at home. Bye now. Anderson? What's going on? Just a little welcome to the neighborhood gift for you, Jensen. Uh, pathologists or not, uh, no hard feelings. Uh, oh, thank you. Don't mention it. Uh, let's go, Louie. We got work to do. The Wilson house is a mess. 4F or not, he's a neighbor. Hey, man. Thanks a lot. No problem. See you in school tomorrow. Wait, we're coming with you. Funny thing about natural disasters, they can destroy a neighborhood, but they can also bring it back together at the same time. Anybody care for a sweet potato Of course, there will always be those fundamental conflicts that even a flood can't resolve. He's killing me! He's killing me! That's comedy! That's comedy! Uh, come on, Jensen. I know he's not wearing a dress or anything, but that is funny! Funny's funny, Jensen. Funny gets the money, don't you know? <laughs> he used to come over there and uh, entertain us when we were down and out. Uh, you never... You don't forget stuff like that. And I had mud. I had mud on my face as camouflage, and he made me laugh so hard it cracked off. That's how good he was. Not to me. What do you mean, not to you? Bob Hope spells funny. It just doesn't appeal to me. What? What do you know? You pathologists, you're all the same. No sense of humor. <laughs> I've got a sense of humor. You're killing me. 
You really, you think a stiff is funny? A guy laying on a slab, that's funny? I'll give you a funny. How about Hope, huh? Comedy's timing and he's got it! Yeah, I hope when I die you're not around. Don't want you poking and prodding on me. I don't want anyone. Yeah, uh, Louie, make a note that if I die, I don't want that Jensen pathologist to uh, send me over to somebody. Make sure they were a veteran. They'll understand the cover that wall wound up. Well, I think that's everybody. These are my thank you notes. It's important to thank people for nice things they do. My dad taught me that, even though he didn't know it. He always grumbled and complained about everything. Everything was a big production, even going to the grocery store. And the way he drove that cart, just like his car. Watch it! Move out of the way! Hey! God tried to cut me off. He'd drive people right into the frozen food section. One other thing he did at the grocery store is he bought groceries. Well, they weren't for us, and I couldn't figure out what it was all about. And then on the way home, he would drop these extra groceries off at a neighbor's house. You know, the guy who was out of work? Well, that's what he'd do. And he taught me about being nice and about being giving, and that's a pretty cool thing. My dad was really cool in a lot of ways, although I never told him that. It's hard to tell your dad, hey, dad, you're cool. Hmm. Try it. My work. Winters seemed to last forever in Cedar Knoll, Wisconsin. And the longer they went on, the shorter everyone's tempers became. Oh, when are they going to quit with all this Christmas music? When is spring going to come? I'm telling you, if I hear one more Christmas girl, I'm going to flip. <laughs> By the time spring finally arrived, cabin fever had long since mutated into cabin warfare. And it was time for the annual neighborhood feud. What a cruel world it really is. Anything could set off a neighborhood feud. A newspaper delivered to the wrong house, a broken lawn sprinkler, or even the arrival of new next door neighbors. So the Jensen's moved in next door on a Thursday, and the following Sunday, all our neighbors, armed with tuna delight, cucumber salad, bread pudding, paraded into our backyard. Potluck suppers were my mom's passion in life. Every single neighborhood event warranted one. Mom, can I stop now? Keep peeling, Tommy. You can never have enough sweet potatoes. As a lifetime window monitor, Mom had the inside scoop on all the neighbors. Oh, look, there are the Powells. They're real rich. And you think with all their money, they'd bring something more than a jello mold. <laughs> but that's okay. Mom, the Wilsons are on the phone. They want to know what to bring. They're real poor, impoverished destitute. Oh, they don't have to bring anything. You just tell them to come. Oh, look, the Barkers. Their grandmother lives with them. She's 102. Had her birthday last I week. I shared my own neighborhood she secrets with Scott Jensen. All right. This is the best tree for climbing if you want to spy in the Henderson. Meanwhile, in the backyard, Dad shared a little of his own warm and cuddly hospitality. Now, oh, Jensen, you're a pathologist, are you? Huh. What's that, like an Indian guy? <laughs> You look for paths in the woods? Actually, pathology is the study of post-mortem corpses. Huh? Yeah, study stiffs. Uh. In a crude sort of way, you are correct. Could you watch these for a minute? Sure. Hey, you didn't come right from work, did ya? No. I don't want any of that pathologist juice on my uh, burger there. More sweet potatoes, dear? Ah, for crying out loud, how many did you make? Well, there's three bowls on the table, more in the oven, and the rest are in the garage. Now, you sure you don't want to have some? The neighbor's a wacko. Andy, be nice. Hey, he studies dead bodies. Everybody has a hobby. He's a vegetarian. Ooh, you think he'd like some sweet potatoes? Ah. So, I understand you're a vegetarian who studies dead bodies. So? So? Hey, you catch Bob Hope last night on the tube? Ah, ah. Nah, I don't like him. What? Well, I just don't think he's funny. And just like that, another neighborhood feud was born. I once saw Bob Hope do a special USO show for German prisoners of war. Get him rolling in the aisles. They don't even speak English. They gave him a standing ovation. Who do you like, Hackett, Youngman? Oh, those guys are washed up. Oh. Well, if you really want to know, I prefer Milton Berle. He likes Milton Berle. That guy wears a dress. 
<laughs> That's why it's funny. Unbelievable. My next door neighbor likes Milton Burrow, everyone. Well, at least he's using jokes from this century. Ah, gee. Bob Hope's jokes are not old. They're good jokes, American jokes. Jokes that don't prance around in a dress and high heels. So maybe you should just get your... Uh... Hey, Dad, can we get some burgers? How do you like your scotch? Burnt or charred? Good idea. Why don't we all have something to eat? Hey, Burl boy. I hate to bother you, but your dog's ripping up my lawn. Snickers is just digging for bones, Mr. Anderson. On my yard? Actually, I didn't want to bring this up, but that section of the yard right there belongs to me. What are you talking about? Who mows the lawn? Who rakes the lawn? Who manicures this doll, huh? I do. Who asked you? I saw the property map when I bought the house. It clearly shows that my property extends all the way to that tree. Andy, maybe we should call it a day. I'll handle this, dear. Listen to me, land grabber. You're dealing with a decorated war veteran here. Those mortar blasts must have wrecked your hearing, then. Read my lips. That land is my land. That land is my land. That land is your land. Just because it's a song, Jensen, don't make it true. You're hopeless, Anderson. Hopeless, completely hopeless.